Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Louis de Souza here. Today is Monday, March the 25th, 2019. It's 8 a.m. in New York. It's 5 a.m. in Los Angeles. It's 12 noon in London. Sydney, Australia is about 11 p.m. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we're off to a happy start today. We were both feeling good. We hope you're feeling good as well. Um, we're going to be taking uh, live stream questions for from our live stream listeners, anyone who wants to ask questions. But in the meantime, we'll also just be talking about the beauties of the law of attraction and being deliberate creators in a world built by deliberate creators, which uh, that, that's something that I try to spend a little time thinking about every day, Louie. I don't, I don't know if you do, but just appreciating the fact that we all created this amazing place that has this all these amazing features to it. There's, you know, the the various diverse aspects of life. Um, there's great beauty in the planet. I mean, it's an amazing place we create. How the heck did we do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting because we created it. So Abram tells us all through our thoughts. So through the millennia of non-physical entities that have thought about contrasting universe have manifested all this beauty in so many different dis- indescribable ways mm. it's 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 something you 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 just can't help but appreciate on such a beautiful deep level when you start grasping that your higher self is part of the creator of all of this mm-hmm. absolutely yeah and in the process of being the creator we create our own lives at the same time and, and it's yeah all we create our world within the world <laughs> it's all one great big dance that we end up doing all the time. <clears throat> Truly amazing. And, and, and we do it without having had dance lessons. It's am- that's amazing, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many times have you played in the, in, in the contrasting universe? I have no idea. I well, have no idea. Well, maybe you have had some lessons is all I'm pointing out. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, let's just say we, just, I, just a few, just let, a few. Let's just say we did it without an instruction manual, and leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> we got the manual now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do now. It was recently written by a few different people, which is cool. Um, well, let's see. I don't really see any uh, questions coming through, so I think we can just kind of uh, go along with w- whatever direction we want to take this. So. Um, I'll just do the obvious question. How was your weekend? Did you do anything fun? Any any fabulous deliberate creating going on over there in, in London town? Mm, um, we had uh, gorgeous weather, and we have gorgeous weather today. Um, and um, what did I do? It's so difficult to remember what I did <laughs> two hours ago, never mind <laughs> a weekend ago. <laughs> The past is in the past for me. That's right, yes. He <laughs> lives forward. <laughs> he lives so much in the now that he can't even remember what's in the past. <laughs> I think more of us who just forget what happened yesterday. <laughs> Unless it was good and then you can carry it as a as as a milk machine. Well yeah, exactly. And and that's actually well Saturday, that was what Saturday was for us because we went up to Vermont and visited friends at Mount Snow, Vermont and just had a wonderful time. Um, mm. And what was really cool about it is that um, this, this is not going to sound cool the way I say it, but but hear me out. Um, the the couple cool. the couple are named George and Leona. George actually has cancer, um, and that's the part that doesn't sound so cool. But he has, in the last year or so, made a tremendous turnaround in his attitude and in his focus. And and Louise was mentioning uh, as we drove home, it was the happiest she'd ever seen him. I mean, he had really made a drastic turnaround because he was usually, he, he used to be really Mr. Negative. And now, I mean, I can't say everything that came out of his mouth was positive, but most of it was. Most of it was very much on a positive track. It was refreshing. It was nice. It was, it was a very, it made for very pleasant conversations. So um, while some of the conversation did go into not so pleasant topics and areas, which often happens, for the most part, most of the conversation was in good areas, and we were sm- smiling, and we were laughing, and just having a good time. It was wonderful. It was a great weekend. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you got to celebrate what, those. What, Talk about milking it, right? Mm. I mean, what what a better 
You, you know, if you if you were sick, dying, whatever, um, who would you like to come round? Somebody who's happy, fun, or somebody who's going to look at you and talk about the serious condition that you're mm. in? Which which kind of person would you prefer? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, the the interesting part was he was actually more positive than his wife, who's usually the more positive one. Her, she was mm. she was one who was struggling a little bit, so Louise and I were kind of the, helping the, her to get better. They often better take place. more strain the the partners than than the person going through. True, it so yeah, I see it quite often. Yeah. yeah, that is true. That is true. So I mean, everybody needs a I, little I positive. I think it's energy. because of the 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 helplessness aspect. You you feel mm. that you can't do as much as you would like to. Yeah. Um, and nobody really tells you that. Hey, your only job is to be happy and be aligned. There's no other job for you. <laughs> um, and that'll help them more than anything. Mm. But you know, man, man hasn't quite been taught that. You know, you you've got to be worried for your partner and sort them out and heal them and fix them. And yeah, no, it doesn't actually work like that. It's interesting <laughs> that you mentioned the word helplessness because there was a relatively famous in psychology service circles rather. Um, there was a relatively famous book called Helplessness by Dr. Martin Seligman, um, which came out in the 1990s, and it was a really depressing read. I mean, it was there was just nothing nice about it at all. <laughs> it was just all the different ways that being helpless ruins your life and makes you feel terrible and produces horrible medical results and all kinds of stuff. And then the same guy becomes one of the leading spokesmen of the positive psychology movement, completely turning it around and talking about the other completely side of things. Turning around. Completely ah. turning it around, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he is literally one of the top um, researchers in the field of positive psychology. But mm. I, I remember when I read that helplessness book many years ago, thinking, first of all, I would never want to read anything by him again. And second of all, <laughs> you know, saying how, my God, I mean, the guy, he, he, and this is long before I understood Law of Attraction. You could just tell from the read, this guy's not going to live past 50. I mean, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, have you have you heard of that book? Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, called "Dead Doctors Don't Lie." No, I don't know that one. Ah, oh, it's fantastic! Absolutely amazing. He was a vet, and as a vet, the animals can't say to you, "This is wrong with you" or "That's wrong with you." Then mm. he had to look at the animal and and discern what the problem is and fix it. Right. <clears throat> So he decided to become a medical human doctor. So hmm. he went off and studied that and became a medical doctor. And he was horrified by the way that they were teaching medicine. Mm. He was absolutely horrified, horrified by it. And uh, he, he did a bit of his own study, and he found out that the average age of a medical doctor survival rate, you know, how long they lived, was 52 or 3 years old. Really? Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. And uh, so he was saying to you, you know, dead doctors, they don't lie. They don't lie to you. <laughs> they don't lie. <laughs> they show you in their own mortality rate how good they are. <laughs> right. Actually, that's one of those words that has a double meaning to it because dead doctors do lie forever. They're just always lying down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. That, that Doesn't that say something? And mm. I'm hoping it's a message. I think it is a message that the medical profession – as a whole, is beginning to pay attention to and has been for a few years now. I mean, they haven't made gigantic shifts, but they, they're making some shifts. They're making some improvements in, in, in the way that they look at stuff. Um, I mean, shifts that are on the order of, well, yeah, I'm not going to reject the idea that you're trying an alternative medicine. I'll, I may kind of shake my head at it and, and, you know, not think well of it, but I won't try to talk you out of it anymore. Mm. You know, that kind of thing. And that's good. Yeah. That's progress. I mean, I, I always try to look for progress. <laughs> the interesting thing is that the kind of doctors I would surround myself with are not, not probably going to be very um, open-minded to that, but somebody who's very focused on the traditional medical system will draw doctors towards them that are mm. more traditionally aligned. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> again, boils down to your reality and your focus and your clarity. And also, you know, when I told you about my my um, appendix story, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I only vaguely listened to the doctors and mm. I contradicted them and I didn't need the operation. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it was 
it's very much again up to the individual and I'm not I'm not one of these people that bows down to listening to a doctor very easily um, <laughs> I have uh, I have very limited uh, respect for them the, the respect comes and when I believe it's necessary for them to do something not when mm. they believe it's necessary for me to do something and if my life's on the line, that's my issue. It's nothing to do with them. I will never hold them responsible or mm. blame them or anything like that. You know, right. it's, it's, it's got absolutely nothing to do with them. Which is true. Um, and, and if I allow them to help me in certain areas that we are both in agreement with, then hey ho, let's go. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. <clears throat> and you know, I, I, I'm happy to agree with them or not agree with them. It just depends on how it feels for me. I think I'm really using my emotional guidance now to see what is right for me and what isn't. Right. Yeah, that's really yeah. critical. That's very important. Um, totally critical. I, I, I'm also getting the sense that the medical profession, because it is, it does seem to be making changes. It does seem to be shifting. It's getting to the point now where we really can attract, uh, I won't, uh, maybe I shouldn't say a like-minded doctor, but someone who is sympathetic to and is at least... Uh, willing to consider the alternatives to what traditional medicine teaches the doctor to do. Um, Cindy Chavez, for instance, told me a story oh, sometime in the last few months about how she had a, a medical situation going on. Um, I believe it was, well, I'm not sure which one. There, there have been a few stories she's told me. But um, the, uh, the doctor that she consulted, was it a doctor she consulted? No, I actually think it was a doctor that a friend consulted. Anyway, um, the doctor basically uh, was, was told that, that the person, the patient, was someone who believed in positive psychology, positive feeling, law of attraction, all that kind of thing. And the doctor was actually supportive of it, actively supportive of it, saying, yes, yes absolutely. The, rest, the research shows you, know, you maintain that kind of mindset, you're going to improve your odds of, of survival and, and getting past this mm-hmm. thing and all that kind of stuff. So that that's encouraging to me because that means we can attract the right kind of doctor if we really need and want to, you know. Instead, yeah, of, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Instead of being tied the to the right a doctor, of life. you'll catch them at the right time, at the right place, yeah. with the right mood, with the right thing. You know, just because your point of attraction is clear, mm-hmm. it makes all the <clears> difference, and and it'll make all the difference, all the difference. And it won't only be doctors; it can be something you hear on a podcast, or yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> It can be, you know, anything. It just happened. I just happened to pop onto that one podcast just for briefly where you were talking about you're getting over your sickness. But now instead of thinking about getting over your sickness, you were, you were focused very, very, very clearly on being well. Right. And what it would feel like and what it would look like. And I was like, Walt, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. You know, like, this guy's got it. Why, did, you know, why doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> go get it. Go get it. <laughs> It was like yeah. there was a, the post on, on this group, um, Law of Attraction Changed My Life group, that I just responded to, and it was saying, hey, um, how do I get lose weight? I can't get my head around it. And I, I love the question because it's something I've dealt with often in my own experiences of helping people lose weight. And mm-hmm. I, I said the first thing I said to respond to it is, you can't lose weight if you're focused on losing weight. Mm. Okay, it doesn't work like that because you're putting out to the universe weight. Right. Universal law of attraction is going to bring back weight. Okay. It's an interesting. And, uh, it's an interesting variation on lack. It's it's the lack of losing weight. <laughs> it's the lack of not having weight. <laughs> it's a very strange thing. <laughs> it's kind of like the double negative going is, on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you, you know how you sometimes use reverse psychology on your kids. Say more. You have something in mind. Yeah, do something and then, you know, go go do that when you don't want them to do it. You know. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you, you're just getting them because they they say no to everything. You just, you just play with that. Well, that's the Tom Sawyer um, approach. Mark Twain wrote the story of Tom Sawyer whitewashing his fence. And he didn't want to whitewash the fence. But when his friends came around, he made a big deal about how excited and wonderful and, and, and fabulous it is to whitewash the fence to the point where <laughs> they all whitewashed the fence for him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'll notice in life when when you are now not focused on losing weight, but you're focused on a healthy, active lifestyle, that that initially it may not feel great to you because you're so far away from actually getting out of the bed and exercising. But <clears throat> you know, you you could be at that stage 
or you can vibrationally build it up to that stage where, you know, you're excited to get out and go and do some exercising mm -hmm. and, and, and get that healthy, nutritious, slow, slow juiced, um, fruit and vegetable from your garden and, and drink it because mm -hmm. it is full of huge amounts of very absorbable minerals and vitamins. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. And um, you add some things to make it taste nice too. <laughs> that's always a good idea. That, that, that's the one thing about those things. They, they need somebody needs to work more on the recipes. I mean, the recipe recipes are everything. You, know, you need like a, a gourmet chef and a vegetable expert. You know, and you know somebody who's an expert at organics and get them in the same room together and say, okay, let's make some magic here. Because until that happens, a lot fewer people are going to be interested in drinking the green drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and do you know how how many minerals and vitamins are are in here that are highly absorbable? When you have that mineral vitamin tablet, a lot of it is passed through in your urine, and you see that yellow urine. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when you're having it fresh from the garden, put straight into a slow blender, uh, the fast ones tend to destroy because of the heat. Some of the minerals and vitamins, because mm -hmm. heat and light and air and all the rest of it destroy minerals and vitamins. It's another reason why you should drink this quickly. I'm just enjoying the way that you say the word vitamin. I think it's wonderful. But <laughs> vitamin boy, where's this vitamin story? <laughs> potato, potato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> oh, I have yeah. the same. I have the same experience with uh, with my walks. I, I mean, it used to be I, I would do my walks just because I needed exercise, just because I need I needed to do something to stop myself from becoming a you know, a, an armchair person who looked like an armchair person. And so I started doing the walking. Now it's gotten to the point where if I don't get my walk, it's like being an addict and not getting your fix. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm so addicted to getting out there and just enjoying the smell of the air and, you know, the, the, yeah, the vegetation yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, you know, the blue of the sky and all that kind of thing. Or even if it's on a cloudy day, just, I mean, I, I'm addicted to it. I, if you're going to be addicted to something, you might as well be addicted to something mm -hmm. good, right? Well, you know, a lot of people say habits are, are bad, you know, but you actually get good habits as well. That's and right. If you start milking the good habits, you really go far. You go hugely far. <laughs> you know, people mustn't underestimate how how powerful it is to find something you love and focus on it. I mean, it really makes a difference, especially when it comes to your job. Mm. Yeah, well, <clears throat> changes your life. Completely changes your life. It does, and, and the simple fact is, we are human beings are programmable, and we are programmed, and we work best under programming. We we are that that's the way we. I mean, if we had to initiate everything as a brand new conscious thought, one hundred percent of the time, we'd be asleep after ten minutes because we'd be exhausted. You know, <laughs> we need we rely on programming, so. It isn't so much we have to get rid of programming. It's more that we have to change it to what we want it to be. And when mm -hmm. we do that, we get a much better result. Yeah, absolutely. I forget and, who it was. Uh, again, if you want to know if a program is good for you, you just ask yourself, how does it feel? Mm. How does it feel? Does it feel? Does it feel really good? Yeah. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Does it feel a little bit iffy? Tighten it up and get, get your, your thinking about what you want shored up so that it's in line with your emotions mm -hmm. and then run with it. But shore it up first before you run with it, so much easier, so much easier, because then you're now getting the universal law of attraction helping you get what you want because you've shored it up first. So it's already a thing that we've done wrong, the wrong way around for, for, for most of our lives, and we've been taught that way as well, is work hard, do hard, dra, dra, dra. Now you're taught, shore it up mentally, feel it, get it in the right place, you know, all the rest of it, and then go do it, and you'll find everything falls in place, and it's so easy. But we're, we're not taught that. So I'm often reiterating this and saying it again and again, but you've really got to get your, your thinking on your topic of where you want to go in alignment with your emotions. And I think it's worth noting that it's not – necessarily uh, a chore to do that in fact the more oh, it's completely the opposite yeah the more time that we spend on yeah. focusing on Good what we point. want for even just a moment it becomes easier and easier it, it, the reprogramming doesn't even feel like reprogramming anymore it just mm. simply feels like well that's the way life is 
Whereas, you know, 10 years before, you could have a reaction that says, yeah, boy, that's a lot of work. <laughs> it, mm. Just through the reiteration and iteration and iteration and iteration, you end up making it easy over time. Well, you're now bringing in the power of the universal law of attraction, which if you just spend 17 seconds will give you 2,000 man-hours of work. Keep doing <laughs> if you do them. <laughs> And if you do a minute, you're going to get millions of hours, man hours, okay, kicked in by the universal law of attraction. So, yes, it is easier. You want to lose weight, focus on what you want, how you feel, how you'll feel when you get there, what it'll look like, you know, where you're going to go, what your next logical step is from where you are, not perfect skinny, blonde, blue eyes on the beach with a bikini, because you may not think that that's a reality tomorrow, you know? Right. So yeah. just go, just focus clearly on what you feel you can achieve nicely the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. And notice that it'll be a cataclysmic effect and you'll have the, the momentum rolling down the hill and slowly helping carve your body because you carved your body fat through your thoughts. Mm. Yep. You can carve your body to the desired shape and size through your thoughts. I'm going to invent a word. My word is slimmerness. What you're, what you're doing is you're, you're trying to aim at focusing on slimmerness, not being necessarily really slim, because that may be too far away mm. from where you are, but slimmer. So you want to go after slimmer, and going after slimmer is the mindset of slimmerness. Mm. <laughs> it's a good one. I was thinking of another one, something like my idea of balancedness or... Mm -hmm. harmonious or mm -hmm. centeredness or yeah. i don't know <clears throat> it's the same idea yeah. same concept it is it is it is it's just looking at it from a slightly different angle yeah yeah the, i mean the main mm -hmm. thing is just finding whatever whether you invent words or not just finding the words and the more importantly the thoughts and feelings that go with the words that reinforce what it is that we really want expressed in the positive rather than in negation because that, that's the problem with the concept of losing weight losing weight is a negation Let's negate mm -hmm. weight, and you can't negate weight. I mean, if, the moment that you successfully negate weight, if you found a way to actually negate weight, you'd be dead <laughs> because <laughs> well, you need some weight. <laughs> you, you would float up to the to 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 the stratosphere and die of no oxygen. <laughs> I mean, body mass is important. You've got to have it in order to live. I mean, my wife actually went through the opposite. She went through the anorexia. And, mm. you know, that's – so So actually, in that point, in, in, in that mindset, it's actually better to have the phrase that's appropriate for it because gain weight actually does make sense. It does – it has a positive mm. side to it. But if she had – Yeah, uh, I've, I've helped many she, people gain weight too, and it's it, it's – it's a slower process, and it's a process of understanding you need to build the muscles, and the muscles yeah. need mm, ideally something like high-intensity interval resistance training, mm -hmm. which I can break down and explain, um, and protein afterwards and maybe even before, um, just making sure you get the protein. So w when you exercise the muscles, you actually tear them. <clears throat> yeah, small and once damages. you've torn them, they're now, in the pro they're now in the perfect place if you've got a protein to build them up and make them bigger. Okay, so um, you'll find that a lot of people who, who want to lose weight, if they gain muscle, first of all, um, the more muscle you've got, the more calories you burn every day. I don't know if people know that, but it's well worth knowing. So even without any exercise, without doing nothing, nada, just the fact that you've got more muscle on your body, you're burning more calories. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's a great way of... Uh, of, of getting into that lovely place of, you know, how to maintain it. Because I eat loads of things that are considered naughty, okay, loads. And I never gain anything. <laughs> I never gain anything. <laughs> yeah, but I always enjoy my exercise and I enjoy my swimming and I enjoy um, all the other things and I've got my protein at the right times and I've got almost everything else nicely balanced over the years and I've got a huge amount of knowledge on health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And uh, I've put all them together to a certain degree, to the degree that I can now enjoy things when I want to. Mm. And I don't feel need to restrict myself for anything. Right. I've actually gone completely the opposite way. I will cut nothing out of my diet. I won't cut alcohol. I won't cut 
fat, I won't cut sugar, I won't cut anything out of my diet. But I'll have it in moderation when it feels right. Mm-hmm. Sure, that makes so sense. So it is cutting out, it is cutting out based on my emotional feeling. Does this feel good or does it not feel good? <clears throat> when I was talking no, about so- my wife with uh, anorexia uh, and mentioning that she thought about the proper way, which was putting on weight, if she had thought about the way that many people thought about it, she would have basically fought against herself because many people thinking about it in terms of stop losing weight. Mm. If you try to stop losing weight, you're doomed. Yeah, you're doomed. <laughs> you just set yourself up for failure. <laughs> Anybody who understands the law of attraction will completely understand that statement. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. It's just, oof. and, and she did for, for, for some time she did until, um, she finally, and, and she, she was dealing with all the, the doctors who were saying, well, all you have to do is just eat, just eat, just eat. And, you know, of course, that doesn't really <laughs> do it either because she hasn't changed the mindset. All she's, yeah, I know I got to eat, but somehow I can't eat. Somehow it's not attractive to me. I, I don't enjoy it. It's not fun. You know, well, that's what she had to turn around. It, it was actually a therapist who gave her the best idea, which was, what do you like? Mm-hmm. What food do you like? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and Louise came up with, I think it was French toast. She says, is that easy mm. for you to make? She says, oh, yeah. And so she says, okay, make that your comfort food. Whenever you don't know what to make, make French toast. Mm. And then, do, do you have anything else that you like? She says, well, I like uh, fettuccine. Okay. Next time you're feeling something, make That's fettuccine. Great. Protein, you know? yeah. So, and, uh, so my know, wife climbed out of anorexia by eating French toast and fettuccine. <laughs> It worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> now she probably likes a lot of other foods too. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we've gotten but to the I'm, point where we're, we're in the other end of the spectrum now. Now we got to go the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> Balancing out. That's so right. That's why, you know, my statement was, you know, my ideal body is the balanced one. Right. And I'm always very focused on that, and I don't seem to gain or lose. It just seems to be happy, be happy. Oh, and I can. Th- other things I'm thinking about are flexibility. Mm. I'm thinking about hydration and just being nicely hydrated and keeping mm. enough water all the time. Yeah. I agree with you. And, you know, watching my urine, watching my stool, always. Never a time I don't turn around and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> just I to check to, to see if it's still there. Working nicely, working nicely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if they're not, I've, I've got some prunes. I go and grab some prunes and four prunes a day. That'll keep you nice and regular, clean out the gut. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. It's funny. I get the tinned ones, which are nice and soft, and you just put them in the mouth, spit out the the pip, and and it's quick and easy. Four of them a day. And I love the taste as well, so it's glorious. See, that's fortunate because I can't stand the the taste of prunes. So you're lucky that you like prunes. That's Mm. wonderful. I mean, Mm. mean, not lucky, but you know what I mean. That's a good thing (laughs) that you you like prunes because, I mean, that that makes all the difference in the world when you really can enjoy it like that. That's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not not a fussy person at all. You can literally, I'll I'll go to anybody's house and pretty much eat anything. Mm. Anything. And there are certain things which, you know, I won't try again. <laughs> mm, yeah, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't quite agree, but I'm, I'm open to try and try. And, and I wish more people were like that because I see so many people shutting themselves down. Oh, I'm allergic to wheat. I cut out bread. Oh, but there's wheat and so many other things. So I cut all those out. Oh, so there's wheat in this as well. And I've got to cut out that. Oh, now I'm allergic to barley. I've got to cut out that. Now I'm. Now I'm allergic to rye. I've got to cut out that. Now I'm called a celiac. Now I've got to cut out this. I've got to cut out that. And eventually they're, they're like, what do they eat? What do mm. they live on anymore? Where's the pleasure in life? I mean, it's all gone. I mean, mm-hmm. they're eating rice cakes with a bit of honey is what my friend used to live on. And I'm like, come on. It's like not a life. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a life. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, so too. I have, I have gone down the route of having allergies along the way and I've made dead sure that I have I was allergic to milk. I'm not allergic to milk anymore. I was allergic to wheat. I'm not allergic to wheat anymore. Mm. Um, you know, I was allergic to fish, for, you know, skin rash and things like that, and I'm not allergic to that anymore. You know, and I'm, I literally, I don't think I'm allergic to anything anymore. Um, I used to be allergic to dust. I'm not allergic to that anymore. Um, you know, uh, as a kid, I had these little dot tests on your arm where they, they test all you. I was allergic to so many things. And now I'm, I'm just allergic to nothing, like nothing. And I will focus very clearly on, 
I want to experience everything. I want to do everything. I want to include things. I don't want to cut them out. You know? Isn't uh, it so it's a, Isn't it amazing how huh? just, just that one kind of, of change the way you express things makes all the difference. Because what you probably yeah, yeah, talked yeah. about before was how you couldn't have stuff and how you mm, know, mm, stuff mm. was bad for you and, oh, I have to stay away from that and all that. And, and you just changed your dialogue and you changed your way of thinking about it. And that made all the difference. Mm. Yeah. So I see there's guys watching us live as well. I'd love some comments. I'd love some questions. I mean, on anything on health, nutrition, law of attraction, um, anything you absolutely feel like, just ask away. And, I, you know, even more, I would love you guys to join us on Blue Jeans and actually talk live to us. Um, and actually, so I think we I have somebody. Wanna... We have somebody on Blue Jeans with us. I believe Sam from Los Angeles is hooked in. Sam, and, how did we miss you? Well, he's he's there. He's got to unmute his <laughs> microphone for us to hear him, but maybe he'll decide to come on. Yeah, he's unmuting his microphone. How you doing, Sam? Yeah, how you guys doing? We're doing great. What What's going on in L.A. these days? Uh, not much. Just pretty much work. Um, working on stuff, pretty much. I'm on my way to work right now, so that I that I get uh, check in with you guys and see what you guys are talking about today. Fantastic. What would you like us to talk about? You got anything you wanted to do to, to throw into the mix? Um, I want to just comment on what you were saying about, you know, health and law of attraction and everything. Um, so myself, I'm kind of dealing with, with uh, a, a kind of a, uh, I want to say a disease, but pretty much uh, I'm kind of going through something myself. And, and I feel like you attract things that come into your life when you think about them and I don't know, not that you want them, but something happens that it kind of happens to you, but you kind of attract it when you're subconsciously thinking about it. And I finally realized that that's what happened to me, and that's how I got what I had, or what I have, sort of a thing. And the fact that when you just go ahead and change your mindsets and start thinking differently, it really does make a huge difference. And, so you know, I'm on, my way, I'm on my way to getting healed now, and I'm kind of, you know, Hopefully I'll be I'll get better and stuff, but I feel like you know being able to like your spiritual and your mind and your um, your health all have to align together to be able to actually complete this. It can't just be you know one thing. Yeah, I mean Sam, this is this is what I already wanted to say to you. First of all, I'm so excited that you have seen cause and effect. You've seen the thinking that created the situation. Yeah. Okay, so that is the huge key to the puzzle. All right, mm. so you've now seen cause and effect. Now, once you've done that, you can now see how a different focus can create a different result. All right? Yeah, which, now, which, I'm, which I'm experiencing that, which I think I'm experiencing that right now in a way. Um, you know, I mean, I've been going to alternative doctors and getting the treatments that I've been told. I've met, I've found people who have said that, you know, this, things are incurable. And I found others who actually are able to cure things and have, having to open my eyes and seeing, like, a different part, part, set of things where a real doctor, like a Western doctor, doesn't believe in these things, like, you know, ozone and things like that, as opposed to other people, which they believe in these kind of things, and meeting people and finding people that are, are almost like against government, but they go against things that, that you normally don't. They go against some of society's norms, yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so Sam, what, what, what's happening here is a process. You, you have realized the thought process that, that caused it. You have now created a thought process of what can help it. You're focused on that, and you're heading in the right direction, and I still hear the doubt, hopefully I will be healed, okay, kind of comments there. So there's still doubt in, 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 in your, your progress, which is fair enough, but you have moved from a lower vibration to a higher vibration. And if you focus on just going to the next logical step or make a focus wheel for yourself, all right, so you find out where you are. If you don't know what a focus wheel is, type the word Abram Hicks and focus wheel onto YouTube. Um, create a focus wheel and then just focus a higher vibration and higher vibration thought into it. And you will find you'll be out of it in no time, absolutely no time. 
and you've just got to keep a clear, clear thought process going there uh, on what you want. And it's a step-by-step journey. And what, what you'll understand, well, let me ask you this question. Are you a lot clearer about your health, your body, and where you want to be now that you've had this, whatever it is, okay? Um, I think so. I mean, yes, I do. I would, I would say I think so. I do. Yes. Yes. So you'll start seeing that clarity of, oh, of course, you know, I have a much clearer idea of where I want to be health wise and, 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 or, or life wise and, and what I want to do with my life and what I want to do with the time I've got in my life, etc. Everything becomes a lot clearer. Okay. And for me, when I've experienced things like that, I've been immensely grateful for the contrast, for, for those very deliberate, deliberate uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, um, hindering experiences that have really taken me to the cleaners that, that have helped me clarify endlessly about where I want to go and what I want to do. So appreciating that aspect of your current experience, appreciating the sickness for its helping with the clarity of where you want to go and what you want to do is of immense importance and milk that. And appreciating the clarity I itself. I agree with you on that. Um, yeah, like I, I met I met someone um, out of nowhere, which is amazing. She's amazing. She's like a spiritual person, and she's also like a psychologist, and she's just very spiritual, and she, she goes like above like all these things. And I took her self-healing classes, and um, they talk about how to, you know, meditate and, get into alpha and sort of like sort of, sort of like be able to get more spiritual minded in a way and before all that I didn't believe in that, these things at all I was like you know what these things are BS and they're really nothing <laughs> blah, blah blah but once I got into a class and I started to like really like believe in it and things and then I started meeting people around me who actually do this like believe in this too like law of attraction I made this girl at work um, where she def- you know she's a huge positive influence my life right now uh she's amazing um and you know she's always like pushing me harder to like believe in be positive and things like that and uh it's it's crazy how everything is i'm meeting all these different people and after that class i also able to find um you know the station here too so it was just all together just all kind of went together in a way which was really freaky at the same time um and but yeah, so 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 I, and now I do believe in these things, and I feel like people who are sick or who get sick, let's say cancer or any type of disease they get, and I feel like it's trying to teach them something. It's something that deep down they really got to figure out why did this come into my life or why did I get this, and once they fully deeply believe in that and actually start searching for the answer, they start to fully kind of get the answer. Um, I'm still searching for the real answer, but I have an I think I have an idea of why like, I have I got this this thing, but it's just like I feel like you know if you're not good to yourself or if you don't love yourself or you know I I've, I've seen that a lot of people get cancer and usually from what my understanding is when you get kind of a cancer or that type of thing it's because you don't even love yourself or you don't treat yourself right or subconscious there's something that you know, it is, is there. I could be wrong, but from my experience of seeing this, I feel like this is what I've come to the conclusion of, of why people get, you know, a disease and, or any types of illnesses. Yeah. So you're, you're spot on. So uh, there's a few things I wanted to touch on. One is thoughts create your reality. You're starting to understand that. You're starting to grasp that. You're starting to live that. Um. So the other one I wanted to, to touch on was the word spirituality. So I wanted to clear that up for you. At the moment, I'm going to ask you, can you give me a summary of what you believe the word spirituality means to you now? Um, spirituality means like the universe and your higher self or um, I, guess, I guess God in a way. Um, okay. I, I think. Okay. Or just something higher than yourself, something that's not, something that's higher than, than you know, than, um, yeah, higher than yourself. So, so Sam, that, that is a, a common explanation for the word spiritual from most people. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to run a little story by you. 
you were non-physical before you came into the physical universe, and you came into the physical universe to play with the contrast, and you decided to choose a vibrational interpreting machine, which we call the physical body, to play with the contrast in. And you non-physical self came and joined your physical self um, in the physical universe, and your non-physical self is the bigger part of you. Okay? Wow. Okay. All right. So this is the important understanding of what actually has happened here. So when you talk about spiritual, you really need to be looking at the non-physical part of yourself, which is your higher self, which is guiding you. That higher self is filled with your vortex. Your vortex is full of everything you want. Okay? Right. So when you feel positive emotion, you are heading towards a correct um, solution to getting what you want. When you're feeling a negative emotion, you are turning away from what you want. So the important thing to understand now about spiritual is spiritual is you. Your higher self, your non-physical <laughs> self is your spiritual guide. And it can manifest in different ways. It can be an angel, it can be this, it can be that, it can be 101 other things it can be um, that you can perceive it as, but ultimately you are guiding yourself. Your higher self is guiding you, and that is the spiritual part of you. If you want to use that word, I just like using my non-physical guide, whatever. Ah, I see. Okay, so, and, and your guide is guiding you all the time because you're listening to Louis and you're thinking, are you feeling positive emotion or are you feeling negative emotion? What are you saying? And you use that as a guidance as to if what I'm saying is right for you now. Okay. Right. I also, right. I also so like you, taking that an extra step. I like to uh, take the word higher out of it, the higher self, and change it to my inner Walt or my inner being mm -hmm. because I don't want to think of the non-physical self, the non-physical side of myself as being in some way superior to who I am. Now, if we turn the word higher into higher Absolutely. vibration, that makes a lot more sense. But that's usually mm -hmm. not what people mean. When they say higher, they usually mean, like, God's up there and I'm down here. Yeah, they're separating themselves from yeah. the spiritual. They're separating. They, they, something is bigger than them, better than them. That's right. something that they've got to, got to become. When you already are it, Sam, you are your non-physical self. You are, your non-physical self's already... 90% you, and you've got this 10% vibration interpreting machine called the body there. So what, what you come to realize is that you need to start communicating or talking to this non-physical part of you. And to do that, you right. need to still the thoughts. And when they're talking about getting to the alpha state and meditation and all these things, all these things are there to slow down the mind a little bit so that you can now talk to your universal mind, to your non-physical self and that non-physical self just spending three or four seconds there can regenerate you forever you know for an, a very very long time okay so don't underestimate the power of all these kind of exercises that still the mind because once you tap in and touch and sit in the arms of source energy you are given a huge boost massive on unprecedented proportions. They can wipe out illnesses. They can cause miracles. They can do things that you could not even dream of. So, you know, everything that you're doing and everybody you're drawing into your life at the moment is helping guiding you towards where you're going. And you, you're getting the people based on your vibration. So your vibration, you really must have started looking at the positive. Okay, because that's why, because what you're putting out of the universe, you're now drawing back these beautiful people lovely lady at work, etc. Um, and now you've got to milk it and you've got to play the game with them and, and enjoy it. And, 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 you know, they'll all give you a little piece of the puzzle and, and you'll be able to move forward. So just carpe diem, enjoy the day, play with it and, and go, run with it. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm excited for you. And congratulations, by the way, because you're, you are now reconnecting with who you really are. Which is fantastic. That that's worth celebrating. It's no longer it's no longer that thing that's over there. It's now you. Yeah. Yeah. So well done. And thanks for uh, connecting in and asking us about that, telling us about what's going on. We appreciate your sharing your story. I, I mean, I still have ways to go, though. You know what I mean? 
Definitely. Thank you, guys. Hey, you Sam. You're welcome. <laughs> we all have ways to go. The, you, 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 as Abraham says, you can't you can get it done. You can never get it done, and you can never get it wrong. You never get it wrong. And I like to turn it around to you always get it right, and the road goes on forever. So guess what? Yeah. This keeps like going. <laughs> this just keeps going. This is the road show that never ends. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Paula Page says, I'm gluten-free. It's a sensitivity. So really, are you saying I should be thinking I am able to eat anything I want that suits my body in every way, something like that? So, Paula, great question. Sorry, Sam, I just want to say thanks for that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you here. If you've got any input, You know, feel feel free to jump in um so paula where you are at the moment i'm gluten free means you um got an intolerance to gluten therefore you've decided to cut it out from your diet and <clears throat> am i saying that you should just go eat gluten things no and the reason why i say no is because they're going to harm you and they're going to harm you not because of any other reason than than you believe they're going to harm you Mm. Okay, so not because it's you need, gluten. You need to start building. <laughs> you need to start building your belief again. Going back to the thoughts, you've now got to get your belief structure going. From I'm intolerant to this, but hey, I was not an intolerant to it before, so maybe I can get there again. Now that might be something you can believe. Okay, mm -hmm. so you need to create a focus wheel with in the middle saying, you know, I can eat what I want when I want. And outside saying, I'm, I'm, um, gluten intolerant. And then you start with number one and you start with, say, that statement I've just said, you know, I was able to tolerate it before. I'm sure I can get there again. And then you build up the focus wheel all the way through to something that's a little more positive, a little more positive, a little more positive, a little more positive. And then you'll be able to do it. Absolutely. No doubt about it, Paula. So understand where you are and understand where you've got to go and understand the process to get from where you are to where you want to go is a vibrational changing of your thinking, not a big jump. If you go jump and start having gluten for things now, I promise you, they'll probably tear your gut to pieces and you'll have all those cramps and all the other things that go with it because I've done that, done that, I've gone there, been, been done that, got the T-shirt, etc. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's fun to play with it because once you've done it with this subject, Paula, you'll realize you can do it with so many others. And it's Absolutely. so exciting because then you're not just doing it with gluten. You're now doing it with your boss. You're doing it with your job. You're doing it with your, with how much fun you're having in your life, et cetera, et cetera. So everything starts expanding and everything starts moving forward. But great question. I love it. I hope that answered a few things for you. And, and just the fact that you're talking about uh, this gluten-free idea and, and changing your thought process to I am able to eat anything I want and it suits my body in every way, the thought process is great. I think what Louis is saying is just don't jump right in and start eating gluten right away. You know, give yourself some time to work on the thought process for a while and get excited about it. Build that up the vibrations to get there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll eventually get to the point where you'll just slide naturally and easily into, you know, a little bit of a gluten thing here, see how you react to it, not a whole lot of it, and then you'll try a little bit more, and you'll, oh, no, it got to back off. Still work on the thought process for a bit. Still work, work on the emotion for a bit. But as you keep working on it and working on it, you'll, it'll, it'll kind of melt away. Is what really happens. Um, anytime so, Paula, the the big challenge I find with many people is because we're not taught this. We're not taught this at school. We're not taught this anywhere. We're not taught that thoughts create anything and everything. Mm. So if you're listening to this on your mobile phone or cell phone, as you call them in America, um, that phone was created by first somebody thinking about it. Mm. Okay. There's nothing in this physical universe that is not created first with thought. Nothing. 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 Your gluten intolerance was created by thought. Absolutely sure. There's no doubt about it. The way to get out of it is to create different thoughts, to tell yourself new stories. So the important thing I like getting through to people and, and like sharing with them is, is the incredible power of understanding the process. And the process is... Thoughts create reality. This is really true. It's not just something Louis is saying, that Abram is saying, <laughs> of the or law of attraction world is saying now. Um, so we're all saying that, but really grasping it is quite another story. You've got to take a tablet to fix this. You've got to have an operation to fix this. No, you can actually do it through thought. 
my gosh, that's scary. That's scary. The implications are boundless. They're, they're, they're on a degree that people will want to lock me up and sound talking rubbish. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it really is quite astounding to, to take the law of attraction and really run with it because it's telling you something which most people, most of your life and even your own experience, because you weren't clearly aware of how it works, has told you it doesn't work like that. You're eluding yourself. Face reality. Come down, you know. And uh, you never want to face reality because you're actually here to create reality and not face it. So don't face your gluten-free. Create the reality you want, which is a healthy, active body that's, in, that's very tolerant to everything and you can eat anything and do anything and you'll get there i've i've been there i've done it i've got the t-shirt i can say how i've done it um and i can tell you i didn't know the law of attraction when i did it but i just had a strong determination at the time that i didn't want to cut anything out of my diet it was very strong in me i didn't want to go down the route that i'd watched so many of my friends go down of cutting this out and that out because i love my bacon i love my Bread and certain types of bread, and they must be good breads. So I'm very fussy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I love my um, peanut butter and honey sandwich um, <laughs> mixed with a bit of butter, not margarine. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, 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 there, there's so it. many things that I, I love, and I do not want to cut them out of my life because they bring me happiness. And the goal in life is to get happier. Which, by the way, Paula has said uh, in her follow-up comment that she's done. Fantastic. Yeah, she did it with hay fever. That's fabulous, and you proved so, it. So, Paula, you've already, really, you've already got a great example in your own life, which you can believe. Okay, belief is just a thought you think often. Um, now you need to extend that to the next thing, which is your gluten intolerance. Mm -hmm. And then you can extend it to more and more things. And that is the path of the law of attraction, guys. That's what it is. It's, it's learning to have faith, faith in yourself, faith, faith in the fact that your emotions are your guidance, that when you focus on what you want, you'll get it. Okay, that's, you know, if somebody wants to know what faith's really about, it's that you have a vortex, a big pool Sitting over your left shoulder, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's off to the right hip of, of Esther That's Hicks right is where it is. <laughs> that is. That is full of everything you want, okay? And that it's dying to give it to you. All you need to do is focus on it and allow it into your life. And that is it. It's, it's so simple. And the solution you go to for any problem, that's, that's what I love teaching people. I love teaching people, guys, there's one solution for every single solitary problem in your life. Mm. It doesn't change. It's just one simple solution. Simple, simple, simple. And that is first and foremost start understanding the thoughts create your reality. Okay. Next is how do I work with it? And, and when you're over here, you need to vibrationally go up the scale. Get to where you want. And that's it. Get that game over. You're just starting to create things that you love and have a fantastic life and move on and all these other things have vanished because you're not focusing on them. The only thing, the only th gluten that can harm you is a thought about gluten that is harming you. That's the only gluten that can harm you. And it will. And it will. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> because that's where your thoughts are. So gluten intolerance is already saying... Intolerance. Intolerance is what you don't want. So those words must be changed around to gluten acceptance or mm. gluten tolerance. I, I would I would just scrap it all together. I would just say I want to be able to enjoy all food. You know, take the take 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 go off the subject completely of gluten because it's too big for you probably. No, that's a good point. It's just too big. And change the subject to healthy, active lifestyle, resistant and resilient body. My cells are incredible. They know what to absorb and what not to absorb. And I'm going to leave it to, the, you know, I don't have to focus on my breathing or my bowel movement or going to the loo or whatever, you know. It all happens naturally. There's so many functions in the body that happen naturally. You don't have to focus on that. You just have to focus on this incredible body that's able to deal with everything. And that's it. Focus on that and, and it'll work for you. It's just... 
It'll seem like magic, and the doctors will tell you that um, they've never seen anything like it. And, <laughs> you know, you'll have all these statements of people coming to you, um, and just ignore them all and just carry on focusing on it. Try, try. Don't spend any time trying to convince other people that this works. Yeah, that, that's a real yeah. time waste. Not only is that a time waster, that'll set you back. Because if you're trying to bring the whole world up with you, it really slows you down. Rather let people come to you and say, wow, what are you doing? This looks fantastic. I wanted to get some of that. Then you can talk to them, no problem. But when you're trying to grab the whole world and take them up with you, and this is how it works, don't even bother. Don't even bother. Yeah. You I, will weigh yourself down and you will slow yourself down so much. So The rule that, I follow on that is, the, the rule I follow is uh, never, ever discuss any of this until someone asks you about it. If someone asks you about it or if somebody asks you something that you can that you can answer with it, great. But until they bring it up, it's not even worth mm. addressing because all you're going to do is run into resistance. Unless maybe you like you headaches. Maybe you like headaches. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's actually what you want in your life. Maybe you desire to have headaches. You know, So that would be a good way to create a headache. But yeah, as, as, as I've told you before, I really do enjoy being sick. And I had a headache <laughs> a couple of nights ago. And I... I do this thing where I put my head on the bed and I stretch the back of my neck. So I'm pushing it down and I'm kind of in a fetal position and bending my back and all the rest of it. And it just feels so good. So you've got the pain and then you've got no pain. And you've got the pain and you've got the no pain. And then you're feeling the contrast. You're playing with the contrast. It's like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> Everybody else would think I'm totally mad. Totally, totally mad. <laughs> it, it is but, cool. No, I want to keep this headache because I can feel the contrast because I'm playing with the contrast. <laughs> but it is cool to play with the contrast when you can get that kind of instant response it really reinforces yeah. how much power it we gets have it's more instant as you go along yeah it's it more instant because you believe you can get instant results exactly Not because you can't get instant results now it's a belief thing and a belief is just a thought you think often now i know i'm confident to a tremendously high degree about changing my physical body it's you know from one state to another and i don't I don't fight the ailments and the sicknesses that I still get now and again. Mm. I don't fight them. I'm, I'm now actually quite pleased that they've come along because I know when I'm sick, I can use all the things that I've got to, to change that and make me feel better. Now, Maggie, you said that's beautiful, Louis. Don't face reality. Create it. Um, I wanted to go through that a little better. you got to be quick because we're, we're running out of time here. And I want to make sure I also oh, get my oh. message in too. So, In fact, let me get the message in and then you can finish up. Yeah. The message is... Speaking of getting instant gratification, hey, become a subscriber. That's a great way to get instant gratification. Anytime that you <laughs> want to listen to the episode, you just play it on your smartphone, and that happens when you're a subscriber. Just go to the homepage of the website, LOAToday.net. The first button at the top is yours. You click it, you walk through the steps, and just like that, you're a subscriber. And once you're a subscriber, make sure that you sp spend the time, take a little time on social media to share the fact that you're enjoying social media's uh, favorite place to go for a good feeling place, your daily dose of happy on LOA today. And with that thought in mind, Louis, go ahead and finish the thought. Sure. Um, don't face your reality created. So, hmm. Yeah, that's what I wanted to put down. A little, 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 little clear on this. We didn't come here, Maggie, to face our reality. That is not what we decided to do before we came here. In our non-physical self, we said, I'm coming to this contrasting universe to create reality. Mm. That's it. That's it. It's beautiful. Just slight, slightly different wording, um, but it's, it's a little clearer. Creating it's reality, you know, believing that we can create reality, enjoying creating reality. I, I mean, we're all still getting used to that idea, and we're all still absorbing it. But what a fabulous idea it is. Because it's I know. the basis for everything, you know? It, and, and you mentioned a number of times how it all comes down to the same thing over and over again. You know, I think that's probably the reason, the one reason more than any other that people resist it. It's all down to one reason. How could that possibly be that everything boils down to one thing? No, that, that's, that's so. Uh, it's a too simple. It's rubbish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Panacea to solve everything. That's not possible. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> not only is it possible, it's reality. Welcome to it. <laughs> Life um, is so simple. So it really simple. is. And we make it so complicated.
So we're going to turn that around starting right now. And with that thought in mind, thank you to our live stream audience for your questions. Thank you to our podcast listeners as well. And we will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Cheers, Nasha, Paula, Maggie, Sam. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>